Come on, church. Do you believe that? Come on. God is alive. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Man, we could just sing that all morning and we and go home and it would be a good day in church. Isn't that right? Welcome to Palm Sunday, everybody. So today's going to be a powerful, powerful day. Yeah, um, if you don't mind, I, I'd love it if you just remain standing for right now. Um, you know, I was, I was really imagining Jesus riding into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday as they, as they, as they lay palm branches down and, and, and cloaks down. And, and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, it, it, what, which, which means save us, save now, save us now. And what they wanted... They wanted someone to save them from the Roman rule, from the Roman persecution. They wanted, Lord, save us to comfort. And here's what, here's what God said. He's not, I'm, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you a general. I'm going to give you a savior. I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. And I was just so grateful today that we have a savior. He's alive, everybody. We are beginning Passion Week as we start off this week and celebrating all that Jesus did, not just on the cross, but on the way to the cross. He was walking and he was, he was living that week with you and me in mind. This past week, I, I, I uh, well, you know what? Go ahead and grab a seat. Go ahead and grab a seat. I, I want to invite my, 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 my buddy, Ephraim. Come on up right now. Put your hands together for Ephraim, everybody. Come on. Ephraim, man. Are you preaching today? You look better than me, bro. What's up? <laughs> and tell everybody, how old are you, Ephraim? I'm 13 years old. 13 years old. Um, this past week, uh, you obviously have seen the news where the Nashville uh, shootings were, where three children were murdered and three adults were murdered in, in a school, Covenant School. And our hearts were so heavy. And immediately we pray. How many of you know that prayer is not our last resort? Prayer is our first response. <laughs> How many of us have said, so? well, all we can do now is pray no, as if it's like, well, we don't know what else to do. No, we get to pray. That's, what we, that's our first response. And, and I, was, I was sharing with Pastor Brax, our student pastor, hey, listen, just want to let you know that there are copycat crimes. Historically, that's what happens when, a, when an event like this happens. There are other things that happen. In, in, uh, as a result of, of people wanting attention. And, uh, and, and, and it comes from a place of brokenness. It comes from a place of aggression. It comes from a place of evil, if I can just be quite honest, demonic activity. And, um, and so just be aware. And then we were made aware that this week we had three of our high schools and one of our middle schools. Uh, some things were, were some chatter, some videos, some things were shared online, social platforms. And it did, you know, it's, it's just, it's, my heart is heavy. I'm a dad before I'm a pastor, everybody. And, um, and so we, we, I'm so grateful that Pastor Brock said, you know what, I, let's call a prayer meeting with our students, everybody. So our, our students and some of the parents and the, and the leaders came on a Thursday night and we just walked around this, this auditorium. We prayed and, and we stood in the gap and we prayed for, for not just Nashville, but we pray for that generation. There's that generation Z and then the alpha generation, 2010 and up and, and below. There's a new generation. How many know that the young people, that generation is under attack? Let me say that again. If you are not aware of that, there is a spiritual attack on the next generation. And you've heard me pray. I mean, we, 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 we love to pray for the young generation. But I was as I was praying and walking, I... Um, I just thought, you know what? I think our church needs to hear his generation pray aloud. And so I, I, I reached out to his dad and uh, surprise, I talked to your dad first. And then, and then I said, cause that is the order. I want to submit that to his dad and, and his dad said, I'll, be, I'll ask him about that. And so Ephraim, I'm, I'm going to ask you, they hear me pray. Could you pray for Nashville and could you pray for your generation? Yes, sir. And we're going to just... Attach our faith to Ephraim's this morning. Come on, everybody. Let's do the, can we stand up back on our feet? Let's stand back on our feet. The, the Bible says when we draw near to him, he, God, draws near to us. Let's draw near to the Lord as we pray with Ephraim this morning. Ephraim, go ahead, my friend. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you in worship and we come to you needing your presence now more than ever. Yes. Nashville, Nashville, they're struggling right now, God. People 
people are evil, God, and the enemy is coming hard after our kids and my friends, God. And God, we need you now more than ever. Heal those families in Nashville yes. who are affected, Father. And God, I ask, don't forget about Forsyth County. Yes, come, come on. and fill Forsyth County. There are so many schools and so many kids and so many families who are scared. God, they're scared. And God, we know that your word says that you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Come on, yes. But Father, we need you to give us that sound mind because the enemy is coming hard and wants to take it away from us. Father, we need you to give us that sound mind and mm. let us give our kids to you, Father. Yes. Take away our fear, take away our trembling, and God, let us walk in confidence into our schools and into our communities and help these kids who are scared, Father. I ask that in your name, amen. Come on, all God's people said. All God's people said. Everybody. All right, this is awesome. I'll tell you what. Find somebody beside you, give them a high five and say, man, you picked the right day to come to Highlands Church and take your attention to the announcements on the screens. Hey Highlands, it's Mia and I hope you've enjoyed your experience so far. If it's your first time with us today, welcome home. We're so glad you're here today. We're about to hear from God's word in just a moment. But before we do that, we've got a lot of exciting things going on at Highlands Church that we don't want you to miss out on. So take out those phones and notes and lean in. Here we go. On the back of the seats today, you'll see a QR code nearby. When you scan that link with your phone's camera, it'll take you to what we call a connection card. Our connection card is, in short, our way of connecting with you. There's places you can fill out prayer requests or even request more information about our church. Feel free to scan that QR code and fill that card out during our time together today. If you've been enjoying our Sunday services and are looking for what's next at Highlands, it's time for you to jump in. If you're wondering how to get plugged in and connected, we offer a place where you can learn more about what's happening at Highlands and learn how you can be a part. We call it Next Steps. Next Steps gathers every Sunday at 11 a.m. in our Dream Team Central Room. Just make your way directly across our lobby and our Next Steps team will be happy to get you to where you need to be. Step one is today, so what are you waiting for? Make plans to hang out with our Next Steps team. Step two is happening in two weeks on April 16th, so mark your calendars now. We look forward to seeing you there. Highlands, Easter Sunday is next week. This year, join us for Because He Lives, an Easter service at Highlands Church. On Easter Sunday, we'll have three opportunities for your family and friends to join us. 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. There will be Easter candy, a petting zoo, and the Easter Bunny might make an appearance. So invite your friends today. We cannot wait to celebrate our risen Savior. Hey parents, our next gen team has planned something super fun for the entire family. On Sunday, April 16th, we are having a Highlands AMC takeover. From 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., we are headed to AMC Avenue for Scythe to watch the new Super Mario Bros. movie. Tickets are only $10 a person, so make sure you buy yours today by scanning this QR code with your phone's camera or by visiting our website. We'll see you at the movies. Well, that's it from me. Let's prepare our hearts to hear from God's word today, and I'll see you after service. Good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? You guys good? That's awesome. Awesome. We're going to have a great, great day today. I want to say a big welcome home to those that are first and second timers, as well as those that are joining us online. Um, all the folks that are online or on spring break, wherever you may be, so glad you guys took the, the time to invest in your faith and grow in your relationship with God as you're joining us today. I, I tell you this, I am so excited about next week. We've been working really hard. We're going to make the gospel so easy, so clear for you to bring your friends that may be far from God or those that are maybe, uh, maybe uh, de-churched. They were in church at one time, but they've, they're not walking with God or they've been out of church for so long and, and they want to come back in. They're just looking for someone to invite them. And you know what? This week, you'll never get an easier yes to an invite to church than this week 
or, or um, to Christmas Eve. Those are the two big, easy asks to come to church. So would you do me a favor? Can you, can you reach out and ask somebody, hey, join me. Come on, join me at Highland Church next weekend, and we'll do all, we'll do all the rest, okay? Well, we're going to start off this month with, with this great series with, called um, uh, Because He Lives. How many of you would say, I remember that old song in from the 60s, uh, ni- 1960s, by the way, for, for you, uh, for, Because He Lives. Come on, y'all remember that song? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, well I, I, I grew up on that song. I, I'm a church kid. I, I grew up in church, and I remember um, uh, when our church used to sing that song, and now, now you're going to laugh at me. So my grandmother, uh, uh, both of my grandmothers before, you know, my, my mom's mom uh, lived with my parents, and, and she used to love the Gaither, the, the Gaither videos. You remember those, everybody? Yeah. So it was like, a, it was like a, 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 a Southern gospel marathon that would never, never end. Okay. And so B.B. went home to be with the Lord. That's my mom's mom. And then and my dad's mom, uh, what did she do? She came right in and did the same thing. She's like, oh, I want to hear the Gaithers. I'm like, great, great. Praise the Lord, you know, and so, so, uh, but it, it, let me just read the, 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 the words to this, this chorus, this song that we used to sing, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Isn't that a great, isn't that a great idea? Because he lives, that's why we're here today. That's why we're singing. That's why we have joy today. That's why, that's why we sing uh, bright music and, and worship music that, that points people to God and celebrates all that God has done. Why? Because we, we, li- we, we serve a living Savior. That's what separates Christianity from all other things. All right, the, the, the religions, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Okay, and, 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 and Jesus is alive. That's why we're alive. That's why we have joy. So let's do this. Let's pray before we jump into God's word. And then uh, we're going to have a great, great time today. Ephraim got us going on, on, the right, on the right start, right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word. Thank you that your word brings light to our path, clarity to our future. It brings uh, strength and hope. And God, it also brings change. And if our country ever needed it, it's right now. And if our homes and if our life ever needed it, it's, it's right now. So we're, we're, we're not just praying change our circumstances. We're praying today this prayer. God, change us. Change, change our lives. May our lives reflect that we know you. And we are growing in our relationship with you. God, I pray that clarity would come today. And Lord, I pray that peace would be here because you are here. And all God's people said, amen, 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 amen. Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to jump right in. Um, uh, how many of you do some, some Bible reading plans? Well, maybe on your version or your smartphones and maybe daily devotion of some sort. I, uh, I've got to tell myself, I, I have a, a Bible reading plan that I've been doing for, for years now. And it's... Um, it's uh, the, the, the one-year Bible. So I try to do, uh, uh, and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and lie, right? I, I, do, I, do I miss a time or do I do this and do I get behind? And yes, I do, but I, I pick right back up. So if you've missed a day or two, it's okay. Jump right back in. Jump right back in. Make that a part of your, uh, your, your daily routine. But I do the one-year Bible, and it's wonderful. And it's kind of not because when you get to Lamentations, everybody, you're like, can we just speed this thing up, Lord? You know, or, or, or Leviticus, you know, seven different ways to treat a scab. Come on, help me out, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But, but, um, but, but lamentation is written by the prophet Jeremiah. And what it is, is he's, 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 uh, it's more likely it's written for like public ritual commemorating the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and, and its temple. And the major themes of, of lamentations are, are this. God is good. Sin has consequences, but God's love, compassion, his faithfulness, they never fail. 
Uh, and, and if there's ever something that we need to hear as, as a nation right now, and as a church right now, is this, God is good. Well, where was God in Nashville? No, 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 no. This is what sin does when sin show, shows up. God is still good, though the world is not sometimes, right? And, and, and it's, it's a rough read, Lamentations, until you get to this one verse that I want to share with you on Palm Sunday, and it's in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 25. He says, I remember my affliction and wandering and bitterness in, in the gall. In other words, hey, God, life stinks. I've got issues. I've got sorrow. I've got heartache. Things are not going well, but, but I remember them. And my soul is downcast within me. Yet I call this to mind. What, what, what am I remembering? What am I distinctly bringing back to my memory? Is this. He says, I remember them. My soul is downcast. Yet I call this to mind. And therefore I have hope. Listen to what brings him hope. The faithful love of the Lord never ends, everybody. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh. The Bible, some translations say they're new every day. God's mercies are new every day. In, in helping you understand why, why we as Christ followers can have hope today as we march into uh, uh, Palm Sunday and Palm and Passion Week. We can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Hey, everybody, we don't have to be in fear as we march into tomorrow. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Why? Because God's already there. He's already waiting on us, right? And, and there's three attributes that would help us to clarify why we can walk confidently into tomorrow. And, and there are so many more attributes of God um, uh, and, and, but, but I want to share three theological ideas, uh, words that you may be new to or maybe you are familiar with, but you're not quite sure of the definition. The first one is this, justice. Justice is this. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Have you ever passed somebody on the highway you know, and, 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 or someone passes you on the highway and a couple miles up the road, they're on the side of the highway and they got a blue light special behind them. And what do you go? You, you say to yourself, that's right, take that. Come on. They got what they deserved. Shame on them, right? What is, here, here's what grace is. Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. I was, I was, um, Years ago, we were meeting off of Pittman Road, and I, I missed. My, I was coming from the north, going south, and and I, I missed my exit. I got to thinking again, and that's what I get for thinking. And and I was like, oh, I've got to hurry up because now I've got to go another exit down, and I've got to I've got to drive back. To, so I went a little bit. The pastor went a little bit fast, everybody. Okay, and then I had a blue light special come up. I had a police officer, and 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 he he pulled me over. He said he said, "Where are you going in such a hurry?" This early in the morning, because it was dark 30, and, and I, on, on that morning, I said, I said, I am going to meet with God. He said, have you been drinking? I said, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm actually, I'm a pastor, and I got to think, and I was thinking, I missed my exit. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm meeting with God, but I'm a pastor. He said, pastor, you better speed it down. The angels can't fly that fast. I said, all right, brother. And he didn't give me a warning. He gave me a, a, a pat on the back. Hey, that's grace. Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. I deserve a ticket, but hey, I got grace that day. Right? I wish I had grace that last, this past year. Come on, y'all remember that testimony. <sighs> Florida, Georgia, state line. Anyway, the next thing is I want you to know about is, is mercy. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Okay? You get what you don't deserve. I got a free pass. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Isn't it true that we want mercy for ourselves, but we want justice for other people? <laughs> Did you hear that collective? Mm. 
Absolutely. Let, let, let's take a poll, okay? And I know this is kind of a, a touchy subject in 2023, but let's take a little poll. I'm talk, uh, how many of y'all had little spankings when you, when you, get, you, get, you got a little spanking by mom and dad or grand, grandparents? Hey, listen, I'm a child of the 80s. I got spanked by my neighbors. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I survived. I mean, I got a little bit of twitch, you know, but that's all right. So, so, you know, maybe it was a little switch or, or, or a little wooden spoon. How many of you, you, you your, your mama made you, uh, daddy made you pick your own switch? Y'all don't even know. See, the, the numbers just dropped, just dropped down, but I guarantee you, some of you are like, Phew. pick your own switch. What is that? Like, you've got to go outside and go to the tree and get the little switch and strip it. And <laughs> some of you are like, dear Lord, welcome to the Hardy family, everybody. We did the wooden spoon because public sold it for like a whole pack for, for 99 cents. We did wooden spoon. But I was, uh, I was the generation, you picked your own switch, okay? And, and it, true story. So, so that, Sandra's parents, they, they believed in that as well. And so Sandra has a younger brother. And, 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 and Brent, um, B- B- Uncle B is what we call him. Uncle B, he, he got more than, than Sandra because Sandra's mother, Teresa, Okay. But, 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 but Sandra got into some stuff every now and then too as a little one. And, and so her, her, her dad said, Brent, you need to go, go pick a switch for your sister. Never send a sibling out to go get a switch it's because he, he comes around the corner dragging a tree limb. <laughs> True story. <laughs> the dad said, what do you want me to do, kill her? He started laughing so hard, she got a pass. Hey, she got mercy. She, she didn't get what she deserved because her dad was laughing too hard. Here's the good news. Y'all okay? You have a little skittish reaction to spanking. Here's the good news of what we're celebrating this week. And this is for our hope for today. God is a merciful God. Whew, man. Because of Jesus' perfect sacrifice, we have access to mercy. We don't deserve it. We deserve separation from God. We deserve eternal separation from God. But we get access to God because of what Jesus provides for us. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 2, but God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. We deserved what? Death? He said, no, 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 I'm not gonna give you what you deserve. I'm gonna give you life. It is not only by God's grace that you have been saved. Please, please, please don't hear this message today and think for a minute that I am saying or we believe here at Highlands Church in sloppy grace. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, um, Sloppy grace is this. I get to live however I wanna live and and it's gonna be okay because it's all under the blood and Jesus is forgiving. God forbid, We don't live like that because the price of Jesus' life was too priceless. It was priceless. We don't don't take that lightly. It's not all good. No, it's not all good. Sin, in the Bible says, in full fruition will create death. So God is also, we need to know this, a God of mercy, but he's also a God of justice. And there are real consequences to sin. Write this statement down. If sin wasn't a big deal, then Jesus wouldn't have to have to pay for hours on the cross. If it wasn't a big deal, then what's the big deal? No, it is a big deal. And Jesus paid a big price. God's only son paid the price for us. Now, here's the mistake that I see people making. We tend to, I'm gonna be a little teachy today, if you don't, if you don't mind. We, we tend to mistake holiness with anger. Holiness, anger, and that's not biblically accurate. God is indeed holy, and at the same time, he is 100% merciful and accessible. And I want you to hear, hear me say that today. God is accessible. God is not in a green room surrounded by bodyguards. God is on the front lawn asking you to come out and do life with him. God is pursuing you. 
God, that, that's, that's what you sensed when you came on the property. It's, it's your heart knocking on your heart's door. You, you haven't been in church in, in quite a while. Maybe you're, you're joining us online, and all of a sudden, you're like, your heart is just, as we were singing today, your heart's, I, just, I, I, miss, I miss home. I want to get closer to God. I, I, I'm not where I used to be. There's a drawing. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit, everybody. What is that? The Holy Spirit saying, come. There's access to the throne of God through Jesus Christ. And I was thinking about, about mercy and why we can face tomorrow. It, it, in, in mercy, it's what gives us hope for tomorrow. Even in the New Testament, God wanted to put mercy, uh, in the New Testament and the Old Testament, God wanted to put mercy in the middle of his dealings with his people. Old and new. I've never thought about this until this past week, just in prayer about, about sharing on this topic today. Mercy in the New Testament, his name is Jesus. Mercy in the Old Testament in the Holy of Holies. And, and ladies and gentlemen, in the mercy seat in the Old Testament or the Bema seat was the covering of the Ark of the Covenant. In the Ark, remember, you know, uh, with, with Harrison Ford, come on, Ark of the Covenant. Any, you know, okay, never, all the old people, Yes. The Ark of the Covenant was where the presence of God dwelt. It was in the Holy of Holies. It was a secret place where only the priest, the high priest, could enter in once a year. And the, 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 the mercy seat was right in the middle. And what it was, it was the covering. It was the covering of the Ark. And in Leviticus 16 describes the Day of Atonement where he would come in, the high priest would come in and give a, a sacrifice of a bull for his sin and a goat for the sins of the nation of Israel. And they would sprinkle the blood of those sacrifices for the atone. Atonement means covering, atone, to cover. Jesus did not cover, he removed. Big difference. Ladies and gentlemen, mercy was available in the Old Testament and mercy is available through Jesus for us today. Aren't you glad for that? The high priest would enter in and sprinkle that down. And Jesus, watch this, is our high priest, the Bible says in Hebrews. And he's also not just the high priest, but he's the perfect lamb of God, the spotless lamb of God that does what? Takes away the sins of the world. So we have hope for tomorrow. Why? Because we have mercy for today. Why? Because we have forgiveness for yesterday. What do we do with our mistakes. Because this is what I believe, that many times we, we feel maybe that I have no hope for tomorrow because maybe, just maybe, you're just still in regret for yesterday. So what do we do with this thing called regret? Maybe you, you, you've, you've done some things or you said some things and you're like, ah, just it's, it's weighing on my mind. It's, it's, I feel stuck in life. Well, the first thing you need to do, write this down, is this. It's a wonderful word, and it's gotten a bad rap. It says this, repent. Everybody say repent. Re repent basically means to change your mind, which changes the course and direction of your life. The word repentance brings with it no regret. Because when I leave my sin with God, I can walk away free. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 7 says. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. And what does it do? It leaves no regret regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. So the first thing we need to do is this. We need to repent. We need to identify that I missed the mark. That's what sin is, is, is missing the mark. I missed the mark. I'm sorry, God. I, I, I submit that to you. And, and now I'm, I've, I've repented of that. And then number two is what we do. So we repented. And number two is we now re redirect regret with motivation. So you don't start with, I want to be motivated to do better. No, you start with, I was wrong. I own it. When you blow it, you know it. That's when you know the Holy Spirit's on the inside. I am teaching this morning. Come on, somebody. When you blow it, you know it. It's not condemnation. It's conviction. It's that, ah, uh, ugh. It's like the Holy Spirit just checks you, not condemns you, but just, I. Ah. And you know, you know when that happens. You, you and I know when that happens. As soon as you say something, as soon as you do something, you go, I want to do over. Uh, mm, I just, 
that's a wonderful thing. But you don't start there. You start with, I'm sorry, God. And I submit that to you. And then we move over to redirect that regret toward motivation. Um, One thing that if if you want to get me going, I mean, it's not hard. I'm... It's just not hard. But, but if you want to get me going, you give everybody a trophy. Mm, help me, God. I go to a kid's game and they don't keep score. I'm like, why bother? I'm going, up. I'm going away. I'm leaving. Like, everybody gets a trophy. No, you don't. Everybody doesn't get a trophy. In the house of God. <laughs> everybody wins. No, they don't. No, they don't. The best thing that ever happened to a kid is the the taste of that rotten taste of losing. Because guess what? I don't like that taste and it motivates me to get better. Okay? Don't wallow in pain. Make pain your motivator. A lot of folks, they just wallow in it and just wallow and they, and, and, and they just kind of they ruminate in their mind. No, let that distaste for that stumbling to, to help you get better. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse seven, we are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. What is that? Hey, look, I know you've had some setbacks. I know that, but you also share in the comfort. Let your setback be a setup for somebody else. If if you've had some distaste of of sin, can you help love people enough to help them miss that for their life? Like bring, and when they do, even if they do make a mistake, let's be the church that's there for people on their worst day. Even the day that they made their bed, they chose to sleep in it, let's still be present It's called the ministry of presence. Share in our comfort. We comfort one another. Why is it that the church, man, we shoot our wounded around here. Come on, man. We don't don't need to do that anymore in the big C church. Not around here. I'm talking about in the big C church. Christians, can we bring comfort instead of condemnation? Redirect regret toward motivation. Let's motivate each, each other. Let's motivate ourselves, but let's motivate each other. How about this? Number three, replace regretful thoughts. We don't cease in our thinking. We replace our thinking. You you don't just, we just need to stop thinking that. Don't, Don't just stop. You need to replace that, change that. Philippians chapter three, verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Apostle Paul said, I haven't arrived. I don't know everything, but I know one thing. I know one, what is that one thing? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. In other words, don't just forget it, replace it. I, I'm not just gonna say, I'm not gonna act like I didn't do it or it didn't happen, no, this is better. You know, I I was not the smartest, uh, I was not the sharpest knife in the drawer uh, in school. But I I remember that we got to this thing in math in elementary school called greater than. I knew that, come on, somebody. That long division is of the devil, but I know greater than, come on. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Hey, God's mercy is greater than your sin. God's grace is greater than your past. So he's saying this, is that one thing that lies ahead is greater than the little things that I've done in the past. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Replace it. Forgetting it means replacing it. You can't make a long road trip staring in the rearview mirror. Isn't that right, everybody? All right. Number four. Number four. Write this down. Okay, but this is so important. You got to receive God's forgiveness. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to redirect some thought. Repent. I'm going to redirect. I'm going to replace. But now I've got, I've got to receive something. And you can tell the value of something by the way that one receives it. When, 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 I, when I, I gave Sandra an engagement ring, okay, and I had to sell blood platelets for it. Come on, somebody. Right, I, I gave her that. Guess what? Didn't she didn't say, "Aw, that's so sweet." No, that girl received that thing. She was excited about it. She knew 
What? Matter of fact, she was wondering, do you sell drugs? Like, what, how did this happen? How did you get the money? <laughs> you know? She received it because she saw the value and the sacrifice that it took. How do you feel when you receive forgiveness? Do you really know how valuable it is? That's what this week is all about. Is Jesus choosing to walk in and not take over, but rather to lay his life down? To, to choose to stay quiet when they said, speak up. Do you understand that, that when he was betrayed by Judas, it didn't surprise him. He knew. He actually said it before it happened. And yet he allowed that process. And then he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, if there's any other way that this can happen, please let it be. Let, and the Bible says, let this cup pass. In other words, is there another way? Is there? But then it gets to this prayer. Mm. But God, it's not my will. Your will be done. And then, you understand, um, he had three trials from the Sanhedrin, the religious sect, and three more trials by the Roman government. All illegal. All, uh, it, was, it was a sham. And then when you see that he died on the cross, immediately we go to the cross. No, no, no. He had to carry his own cross. Come on now. On, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the road to Golgotha. He was nailed and was crucified at nine. He didn't die till three. Guys, there were six hours there. He's, he's hanging in the balance between life and death. Why? Because he knew we needed a savior. Not just someone to overthrow and bring comfort right now. We needed a savior for our sins right now. Here's my point. God's biggest critic is not him, it's you. The devil is the accuser of the brothers and, and the sisters. And he accuses and he says, he reminds us of all the things that we did wrong or we could have done better. I mean, just nothing but condemnation. But God's not doing that. But you know who's the number two biggest critic besides the devil? It's me and you. In Psalm 103, it's not God because the Bible says, who forgives all your sins and all your diseases. Everybody say all. You know, the, here's some deep teaching. In Hebrew, you know what that word all means? All. Simple as that. There's not something that you've done that he's like, no, 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 that's, you've gone too far. He said, listen, I forgive you. I forgive you. Micah 7, 18. Are y'all glad you came to church today? Hope you're getting this. This is, this is priceless. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? Lord, Lord, I'm so grateful that you do not stay angry forever, but you delight in showing mercy. In order to receive something, you have to put something down to open up your life, to make room to receive it. So what do I do? I repent. I'm laying it down. Those things that I did, the things that I, I, I've said, my sin, I repent. I'm changing my mind, recognizing that only God can bring forgiveness, not just better behavior. I'm talking about God is the one that forgives. My behavior is, is, is an outflowing of a changed direction of life now. You don't you don't behave your way into a relationship with God. No, you repent your way home to God. Repent, redirect. Let those pain become motivation and, and, and then replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. And then today, receive God's love. Receive God's mercy. Receive God's forgiveness. One more time, one more time. Let me, let me read this, this scripture to you. And limitations. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Aren't you thankful for the faithful love of the Lord? His mercies never, ever, ever, ever cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Man, I am so grateful for the mercy of God. If you feel like God is mad at you, like he's, he's waiting for you to mess up so he can throw a lightning bolt at you. No, no, no. The wrath of God, the Bible says, was laid upon Jesus for you and for me. 
so we don't have to endure that. Aren't you grateful? Amen. Every head bowed, bowed, every eye closed. I want to pray for you before we leave. Heavenly Father, as we enter this holy week, we can face tomorrow. We, we, we don't have to walk into fear tomorrow. We have hope. Not just because we think things are going to be easier or better. We have hope because we have you. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we have you. We have a relationship with you. We have access to you. So Father, right now, we gladly receive and are grateful for the gift of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that you are a just God. And in your justice, someone had to pay for that sin that we incurred. Because you're just. You did judge. You laid your judgment upon Jesus so we could walk in mercy. If you're here today, still in the attitude of prayer, you would say, Pastor, I, I, I want to receive forgiveness. I want to I want to change my direction of my life. I want to walk away out of here knowing that I'm right with God. I have a real relationship with the Lord. I have access to God through Jesus. And I want to experience that. I want to experience the power of Easter, a fresh start, hope for tomorrow, forgiveness of my past, strength and clarity for my t today. I want that, Pastor. I'd love for you to pray for you right now. If you're here, Anywhere in this auditorium or those that are joining us online, I want to pray for you. If you'll slip your hand up on the count of three, that's just you saying, please count me in on this prayer. I want that today. I want hope for my tomorrow. I want to be able to face tomorrow because I know that I'm right with God today. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Anybody in this place? Anybody in this place? Those that are joining us online, this is for you as well. Man, isn't it good to have the mercy of God on your side? Let's pray and make this easy and accessible for people to access God. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for paying the price for our sin, Lord. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on a cross. And I believe he rose from the dead. Jesus! Save me. I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for the way that I've been living. I repent right now. Come into my life. Give me a fresh start. Today, I'm saved. Holy Spirit, fill me. Give me the power to live for Jesus for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you today that we walk in a fresh revelation of the mercy of God. Thank you, Lord, that as the high priest, we just, we envision that right now as the high priest entered into the holy holies of the tabernacle in the Old Testament. He, he made that sacrifice of the, of the bull for his own sin. He, he, he made the sacrifice of the goat for the sins of, of the nation. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is our high priest today. And that we can boldly approach the throne of God because our sins were separated as far as the east as to the west because of the perfect sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Thank you this week. We walk in hope. We walk in assurance. Lord, we refuse to walk in fear. No matter what comes our way, we know that heaven is our home and that Jesus is our King. I pray a blessing over everybody under the sound of my voice right now. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May he be so gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you. And may God give you this holy week his peace. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, put your hands together. Come on, we celebrate. It's holy week. <laughs>